Hi all, Mike here. I shared a picture on Facebook of a hand plane I was testing that I had just made on my CNC. A friend from high school, which was about 40 years ago for us, reached out and said he'd like to buy one for his mentor. So I made a couple modifications we discussed and got started. Here's that plane, and I'll share the little story about designing and making it while you watch the bandsaw work its way through the block of wood I used. I picked up this block of red oak from one of the members of the local woodworking group. He had several of these in his truck and just wanted to find a new home for them. It was about 14 by 14 by 12 inches and had been air drying for several years. Since this block of red oak doesn't have any flat sides on it, I have a little wedge under one side to try and keep it level as I make the first cut into it. I do have a jointer, but it's only 8 inches wide and I can't remove the guard that would allow me to run something wider than 8, eight inches, so it's not going to help in this case. I need to keep the block level all the way through so it doesn't bind the blade, which would make a sloppy cut or ruin the blade or both. I have a nice miter gauge but the bar is just about an inch too short for this block. So I need to get the cut started before I can use the miter gauge. Basically, this block of wood is a challenge to get square. Once I get one relatively flat surface, things get much easier. I lay that flat surface on the bandsaw table and position it so the next cut removes as little as possible, but enough to provide a flat surface. You can see I ended up with a bit of a bare spot on each surface, which was close enough to what I needed. My bandsaw is a Grizzly G0555XH, which is a 14 inch bandsaw that provides great performance and a small footprint for small shops like mine. This model uses a larger 1 3 quarter horsepower motor and has a 12 inch max cutting capacity. And this block of oak takes it right to maximum capacity. You can't really do this big of a cut on this size bandsaw without a decent blade. I've been very happy with this Highland Woodworking Wood Slicer Resaw Blade. It's 3 quarter inch wide with a variable 3 to 4 teeth per inch and a very thin 1 32nd inch kerf. The variable teeth spacing is intended to reduce vibration during large cuts and it leaves a very smooth surface. They cost about $40 for the size I need on this bandsaw. It's also available in a half inch wide and this is the first time I bought the 3 quarter inch wide version. I need to break these down to blocks about 2 and 3 quarter by 3 inches. Once I get that 2 and 3 quarter chunk sliced off, I'll break that down into blanks for 3 plain bodies. I'll then split the wider dimension of the blank into a one and a half inch book match. The book match is used because I need to cut the inside on the CNC for the iron chip breaker, screw slot, and pin, as well as create some alignment holes for dowels. And after all the cutting is done, we glue it back together, allowing the book match to help eliminate as much of the seam as possible. Our wood is now milled up to rough dimensions, so let's talk about the design work for the hand plane. The design is two sided, split down the middle lengthwise. You can see the overall dimensions here for two halves, which have come from a mix of a Stanley smoothing plane I've had for years, a Hawk Tool smoothing plane kit I bought a couple years ago, and from David Fink's book, Making and Mastering Wood Planes. Using measuring and reading these, along with making a couple prototypes, ended up with the dimensions and design you see here. It will evolve over time, I'm sure. We need some alignment pins for two-sided projects. These are set up to make sure when you flip the project, the pieces will be in the exact spot the CNC expects. We also need some interior alignment pins that serve a similar purpose. When the two halves are put together, these pins make sure they are precisely aligned, eliminating any ridges or gaps along the seams. The iron and chip cavity are created to position the iron correctly on the right side and to allow chips and shavings to collect in the area to the left. Center pin holes will allow the wedge to hold the iron and cap firmly in place. The screw head slot is used to allow the chip breaker screw head to be recessed so the iron can lay flat at the correct 45 degree angle. That's it for the interior carving. We're going to flip the piece and carve the exterior. The exterior is carved in three phases. The first phase is a roughing pass, which takes several passes to go to the entire depth of the plane. The second phase is a smoothing pass, which does the entire depth of the plane in a single pass, but just skims the edge to leave a cleaner finish. The finishing pass does the same thing as a smoothing pass, but in the opposite direction. Due to the rotation of the router bit, this leaves an even cleaner finish on the plane. A small molding pass is done to round the edges of the plane in a uniform way. The sides are still left flat so it can be used with a shooting board, but the edges are rounded to remove any sharp edges against your hands and fingers. The client was presenting this as a gift to his mentor and wanted his mentor's name carved on the side, so VCAR Path is set to take care of that. Let's run the simulation to make sure everything happens the way we expect. First the interior, pins for the two-sided flipping, pins for interior alignment, iron cap and chips,
the center pin for the wedge, the cap screw for the head, and then the exterior roughing pass for cutting out the shape, a smoothing pass, and then a finishing pass. and then a molding pass to round over the top and side edges and a v-card pass for lettering that's what we hope to see in real life so let's go to the CNC with two-sided projects the correct sizes are a little more critical I set up a flattening pass using a little program that I'll link to in the description. The program takes parameters from a web-based form and creates flattening programs based on the input provided. This was done to both sides of the boards to make sure they are completely flat as well as the exact thickness needed. We're finally getting to the main carving of the hand plane. I'll let the CNC run without any commentary and check back in after a few minutes.
All the CNC work is done, so now let's get it glued and clamped, clean it up, apply some Minwax antique oil finish, and get it ready for its new home. Wooden hand planes need to be adjusted with a little hammer or mallet. They can be a traditional hammer shape or you can go with a turned mallet like this one I made on the lathe. 